He's not green, but he's dang sure a goblin. Let's go. Geeks was popping. We got the Spider Man Retro Series Hobgoblin. The Hobgoblin that most people apparently don't want. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the box. Deploying an eerie arsenal of pumpkin bombs and razor sharp bats from his goblin glider, the criminal mastermind Hobgoblin has Spider Man constantly on his guard. Watch out. So I get why some people might be upset. With the retro line, a lot of people get excited because it's a chance to get their hands on an updated version of a figure that is probably expensive on the aftermarket. So usually they just change a little bit of the deco, maybe some colors. But this Hobgoblin is different from the one from the Space Venom Bath Wave in every aspect. You're missing the scales on the arms and legs. The orange on the suit is different. The head sculpt is totally different. This one has a very large forehead. That being said, I may be committing blasphemy by saying that now that I have him out of the package, I'm kind of digging him. Not so much the costume, but the head sculpt and his cloak look kind of cool. Accessories, we've seen all these before, just repainted. We just got this with the retro Green Goblin. Now, this is translucent, the pumpkin bomb. I think it was translucent on the original, but I don't think it was as bright and clear as that. All right, so right out of the box, here's what's ruffling my knickers. Why is the cloak one orange and his spandex and gloves and boots a different orange? I don't remember ever being like that in the comic book or the cartoon. Maybe I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But even on the package, his cloak and his outfit match. And it's off-putting to me. I don't like it at all. I like the head sculpt. I like his body. It looks good. Balanced good so far. But I just don't like the contrasting oranges. But who cares what I like? I'm just your average reviewer. Let's go ahead and bask in his... Two-tone color glory. Keith Lee. So yes, the forehead is long, but I think that makes him look more freakish and ghoulish. So I kind of like that. Hood is well done. Those eyes are popping red. The teeth menacing. They did a good job. I think the head sculpt is fantastic. Cloak looks good. And they did, what, one, two, three layers here. It gathers up just right. It almost looks like one piece. And you can't complain about that. Going down the back, I like the tatters and the holes. It would be nice if maybe a piece was flipped backwards or stuff, but it's soft rubber so you can mess with it. Body smooth. Now, this orange on this plastic, it looks dull and kind of cheap. And I've said this a lot, but it looks like a toy, like the 80s plastic that you would get your toys in, like the old G.I. Joe. So I'm not a fan of that. Boots look good. Again, not a fan of the color. But the paint job is crisp. I don't see any stray marks anywhere. The blue is blue where it's supposed to be blue, and the orange is orange where it's supposed to be orange. If you got the retro green goblin, then you know what the body mold is about. Full 360 there. You win that rat tail. Tilt left. Tilt right. Looking down as a mixed bag, and you push his head down, it tends to pop back up. But it does give you a bit of a, it does give a little bit of an angle downward. Good looking up though. <laughs> and there's down again. Arms go up yay high. Alert HR because he's giving out hugs. We got a chink in the armor, Ted. Going to do wingspan right here at the shoulder joints. They do not want to go into that back piece. So trying to get this arm to go back, it stops. I even went around, put it back up, and then tried to twist it. It doesn't even want to twist into that spot. That's insane. 
so you're not getting any kind of wingspan in there. It's a little bit better on the right side, but still, if you look how far back it goes, it's not even close to flush with the back. Look at that, it even took a chunk out of the arm. See that blue plastic there coming up? Or me trying to force it under there. 360 at the bicep. Did the arm go out? Yeah, 360 at the arm. Nothing at the forearm. And you got your wrist. Repulsive blast. Hold my hand. Kiss the ring. Double jointed elbow, but you do get a little bit of hindrance from the bottom cuff of the glove. What about those abs? Limbo ready. Waist. Full 360, intermittent clicks, very loud. His belt does move. Bend over range. I can see a woofle. Ooh, can cannon full effect there. I was working hard for the money. Look at that banana split. Three sixty at the thigh. Do we get a calf here? Yeah, buddy. Three sixty at the calf. And three sixty at the foot. Sorry, that was off camera. Three sixty at the foot there. Full rocker action. Double jointed knee. Doesn't get too close to kicking his butt though. He's a prancer for sure. Light on his feet. He's a dancer. Look at that moonwalk action. Great range. So Hobgoblin walks into the criminal costume shop for the colorblind, and the guy looks at him and says, Yo, you're really tall. How tall is he? Looks like he pops in at about six inches and two millimeters. So he's about the same height as this jabroni. He's basically the same height as this Rudy Poo. If he's not threatened by tall men, he can team up with Sandman. Man, Kingpin makes everybody look tiny. Death Row Records in the house. Check us out, yo. Wait, don't take the photo. Introducing Short Stacks. Man, that Spider-Man is too small. And this Spider-Man is just right. Ugh, word to the wise. He does not have the horns on the toes, like the Green Goblin, to make the Goblin Guider stay on. That's the only thing that would work. These things, you put them in, it pops right back out. Impossible to get them on. It's ridiculous. Oh. Feet just not gonna stand there. They don't. They don't even get in halfway. And before I twist them around and change them around, doesn't make a difference. Just doesn't go in far enough to get a secure grip. All right. So final verdict. What do I think? Head sculpt on point. Cloak on point. Hmm. Pumpkin bomb on point. Not impressed with this figure. I can't recommend it unless you absolutely need a Hobgoblin if you can't get your hands on the one from the Space Venom Wave. Because uh, the glider, look at that. I had to tilt his feet forward and kind of hand the glider off. There's just no way to work it there. Maybe mine's defective, I don't know. I gotta look on the internet and see if anybody else is having problems. But the glider just doesn't work for him, even with him suspended in the air there. I don't like the colors that are off from between his uh, actual costume and the cloak. And overall, like I said, I'm just disappointed. Out of the whole wave, I was most excited for this guy. And so far, with only, what, two figures left, he's the most disappointing so far. So like I said, so if you have the Hobgoblin from the Space Venom wave, or maybe even the Hobgoblin build figure, I don't know if I'd rush out and get this guy. Uh, maybe he'll hit clearance, but I can't wholeheartedly say go out and pay. What, and what's the upcharge on this one? I think Target's charging $25.99 for these. 
I can't say it's worth it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully I helped you out if you're on the fence or have any other choices. I'm thinking at that price point of $25, $26, you might as well go in and get the Hobgoblin off of eBay for like $80. I know it's a lot more, but this one's definitely not worth close to $30 in my opinion. So I noticed in his picture on the back of the box that they had him standing just like this with his feet tilted. Okay, so this works. Took a couple tries, but it works. And it looks good. But I think I stand by what I said earlier because how often does the Hobgoblin ride his glider like this? He's, he's standing straight up. That's not how he rides it. He bends down while he's flying. So while, yes, this is a neat trick to get him to stay on the glider, you can't do any Hobgoblin-like poses with it. Anything else, and he falls off. Matter of fact, to get him here, you have to lean him back so his feet actually kind of buck up against the little hook so he stays in there. So, I don't know. I'm still up in the air on this guy. Make sure to hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe, turn on notifications. And again, sound off in the comments. Let me know if you think I'm crazy. Is this a great figure and I'm just missing it? Or do you totally agree with me? I want to hear your thoughts. Till next time, piss poor gliders out of here. Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, I'm really, really upset about the glider. If in your display you don't really care about the glider, then, I mean, he stands up well. He's poseable. His joints are nice and stiff. So I'm going to take back what I said about don't buy him, because I'm thinking from only my point of view. But if you don't care about the glider, then he's a solid figure. Yeah, the colors are a bit off. But, I mean, as far as articulation goes, he'll work. You've seen this buck before. He's going to work on your shelf.